So, so the tone of the Secret World is, is an interesting subject because obviously the game appears to be about the end of the world, you know, the rise of evil and the few sort of chosen who stand up against the, uh, the Lovecraftian evil. And of course that is what the game is about and it's something we've shown in the CG movies. But I think it's really important in an MMORPG especially to, to be able to, to see some humor in that. And, and we, we take our story and our universe very seriously. Uh, uh, at the end of the day, you are fighting something dreadful, something dark, you know, people are dying, things are going straight to hell. But at the same time, uh, there is humor in these characters you meet. Hell, figure out what makes them tick and how to make that tick and stop, and I'll buy you a beer at the apocalypse. I think it's just important to, to anchor it in reality, uh, for me at least, because the world is a funny place at times. So even in the face of tragedy, the people are, you know, keep their spirits up. And I think also it's the tone we're consistently going for to, with, you know, the kind of pop culture we're inspired by. It's, it's the kind that sort of does interject humor into darker situations. I think also people, you know, would get very depressed if you have a game that is like, you know, dark and oppressive the whole time. I mean, Silent Hill, for example, is a great game, but it's a game you play for a couple of hours, you're like, I need light, I need sunshine, I need humor. And with The Secret World, we want people to stay there and play. So there are pockets where it's dark and terrible and gruesome, and then there are pockets where it's lighter and, you know, where you feel sort of like, you can take a breath, you know, you feel safe, you feel comfortable. Until now, our secrets are laid bare to strangers, to the world. In The Secret World, you will encounter evil and horrors that goes back thousands and thousands of years, even millions of years, actually. Uh, and you'll encounter things that are much more recent. Uh, we try to sort of, uh, draw from both ancient history and mythology and modern conspiracy theories. You know, you, you are, uh, at one point you're fighting, you know, uh, the mummies of Egypt and next you're fighting zombies in New England that are, you know, uh, created through this strange process with uh, the drought coming from the sea and infecting the locals of this small town Kingsmith with this terrible seed. So, I mean, we're, we're, we're sort of drawing from a lot of different sources here, from, from from demons and werewolves to 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 add you know to robots basically that you're fighting in this ancient Chinese temple, so we try to make it you know to go as broadly as possible and draw inspiration from as many different pop cultural sources as possible. At the same time, giving it our our own twist. I mean, our vampires, for example, they are they they don't really look like vampires you expect. They're out in the daylight uh, and they're covered up. They actually learn that you know a vampire actually smartened up and said you know what if I put some clothes on I'll probably be okay. So they have sort of a tube they use and they have the claws they penetrate the throat with and they stick the tube in and suck the blood out. You know, we try to sort of modernize things in a lot of ways. The story is such a big part of the secret world and, and the way we've looked at it for a long time is like a giant jigsaw puzzle. Uh, uh, there is sort of a complete picture and that's sort of at the end of the road, you know, once you know, done everything, finished everything, and we're 15 years from now, you'll be able to see this vast jigsaw person and say like, oh yeah, that's what it was about. So in that sense, it is sort of driving you towards an answer, right? I mean, that's what our story is about. It's, it's unearthing, uncovering an answer, and then moving on from there. But the way sort of players pick up these jigsaw pieces can be in a lot of different ways. You have our story mission, which is a, a sort of a linear progression to the locations in the game that you can follow. If you choose to do so, I and mean, most people will, Start with your character's origin story, brings you into sort of the hub of your chosen secret society, through the ranks of that secret society, into the world as you go through Solomon Island, you go through Egypt and Transylvania, and it teaches you a lot of the things that are happening in the game world. Aside from that though, you have all the sort of the, 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 the main missions that are sort of aside from the story mission that will fill in a lot of the gaps in the story. Then we have tons of side missions, which again sort of might be about this little tiny piece of the story. Uh, that, that will expand, you know, it will expand upon that. In addition to that, we have lore that players can gather and characters that can talk to. And all this stuff can be experienced in any order you want. And, and the thing is sort of, it, it fills in with information as you learn more and more about the world. So it's, it's sort of like a jigsaw puzzle and an onion. It's an onion jigsaw puzzle. It's a three-dimensional jigsaw puzzle. As you dig into the layers, you get closer and closer to the, the, the core of it. But at launch, of course, we're not gonna reveal everything. We're gonna have sort of a, conclusion of a chapter in a way so you feel like yes you got some answers you go to the end of one road and you realize there's a lot more out there and that's what we're going to build on after launch jeez you never saw anything like this in the cop shows well maybe on cable not the network ones lore in the secret world is one of those features we haven't really talked about uh, much yet and it's, it's something really interesting and I'm, I'm probably i'll be probably be killed if i say too much but lore is um 
breadcrumbs. They're little pieces, snippets of information scattered about the world that there's an incentive to get, not just to get the complete story of what's going on, but also to get rewards and achievements for that. We want to you know, reward players for actually digging into the story, for, for, for spending time exploring, for trying to learn about the world. This is an, you know, a very valid path of progression in the game. Lore in the Secret World is definitely a tangible thing. It's, it's not simply a, a piece of information that you as a player learn, it's something that your player character learns. <laughs> Numbers in the secret world are important. There, there's a meaning behind everything, and that's something that goes for the entire game. Everything you see in the secret world has a meaning. Nothing is left to chance. Nothing is arbitrary. The fact that we have seven ability slots, seven actives and seven passive powers, that's actually important. Seven is an important number. Seven means something. Exactly what it means, I'm not going to say. But seven is an important number in the game. Eight is an important number in the game. Twelve is an important number in the game. There are numbers that mean something in a game where everything is true. Of course, numbers are going to mean something as well. The Illuminati. I'm with the Illuminati. I don't have a badge or anything like that. I'm what you might call a, uh, a hobbyist member.